Uh, so the game we're going to do is we're going to implement the classic game Breakout. We're going to make a clone of that that has been cloned probably a hundred times. The advantage of doing something like that is um, it is a simple game. It is a well-established problem space. And the thing is, if you're if this is your first game, pick something extraordinarily simple, and ideally pick something that already exists and just clone it. Because the problem is, chances are something you think is simple won't be, and also, it won't necessarily be a well-defined problem. You'll have an idea in your head about the way it's supposed to work, but then once you start to implement it, you're actually going to be a little bit unsure about certain facets of it. So for your first game, the best thing to do is to clone something that's already there because you know exactly how it's supposed to work because you have a reference copy. So this, you know, as a tutorial, as a, as a learning experience for yourself. Um, and if you ever uh, intend to release it, just make sure to have enough things that are different and unique um, and that it's not a, a literal one-to-one -one clone because no one wants copyright infringement. Being inspired is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete both these objects, which I can do from this view by hitting delete. I'm going to delete the cube from here, and then I'm going to select the plane from my hi hierarchy, which is exactly the same thing. I'm going to delete that, and I'm also going to get rid of the directional light while I'm at it. So I've got a clean slate. So again, I'm going to implement the breakout game, and for that, if you don't know what it is, it's a simple game where there's a set of bricks, and you have a pallet, and a ball. And the ball goes up, hits a brick, destroying the brick. The ball will bounce off, come back down, and you've got to, you've got to be able to move your pallet to where the ball is going to be so that you catch it so it doesn't go off the screen at the bottom. It'll just bounce off the paddle, uh, pallet or paddle, and then go back up. And then you're going to keep doing that and keep hitting the bricks until all the bricks are cleared, at which point you will have won the level. There will be walls on the left and the top and the right, but none on the bottom. Losing the ball down the bottom is uh, losing a life. Very, very, very simple concept, and it's an easy thing to implement in basically any language. The big thing that we're going to do here in Unity is we are going to try to implement everything using the Unity physics engine just to get experience with that. It's not necessarily the best way of doing it or the most efficient way of doing it necessarily, but it will teach us how to use the Unity physics engine. So um, I'm going to create everything. I'm just going to use basic primitive objects. For most games, you're going to want to create models in a 3D modeling program, for example, example, 3D Studio Max or Blender, Blender of course being free, and there's there's dozens and dozens and dozens of options. Um, but this game we can actually implement completely with plain old primitive objects that are included within Unity itself. So I'm going to go ahead and put a plane back in, and this is going to be the uh, just the background of our, of our level. Um, that way we can color it and apply textures and do all that kind of exciting stuff. I'm going to go ahead and center this plane. And one thing to note, all the Unity primitives, the 0, 0, 0 point is in the exact center of the object. It's not in the top left or anything like that. Um, now, our vision here, we want to align ourselves to the front. So this is, we are looking at the front of the object. And we want to rotate things so that uh, yeah, X and Y. Yeah, so that we are looking directly into the plane from here. So we want to rotate around the X axis. So I'm going to do it from here so I can do it exactly by 90 degrees. So now we have a plane which is standing upright in the world. And our camera is actually facing the back of it. So that's not what we want. So I'm going to, we've got a couple of options. I can either move the camera to the other side, but that would mean giving the camera rotation. And all right, I'm going to accept that the 0, 0, 0 rotation is where we want. So I'm actually going to flip it um, at this point another 100. And, well, I suppose I could just go negative uh, 90. There we are. So now the plane, no, notice that the plane is one-sided. Right, One side, you can see the mesh. One side is the other. If you've never worked in 3D, this is very, very common. Triangles generally just are rendered on one side for a variety of optimization reasons. Uh, you can often turn on double-sided materials, but usually that's a sign that something's kind of gone wrong. So if you ever have a mesh and you can't see it, it's probably because it's the wrong way around. So now we have our camera facing our background, which is great. It's not quite aligned um, because our camera's not at the center point, so we're going to do that. So it's centered X and Y, and that is... That is fine. There will be one issue we're going to run into later um, with perspective and orthogonal cameras, and we'll come back to that. If you're worried about that aspect, don't worry. We'll take care of it. I'm also going to set up a light. I'm going to go ahead and actually put that directional light back in. Um, just so you know, directional light is basically like sunlight. It just has a direction. It's kind of infinite. A point light is like a lamp. It, it illuminates in a radius, a circle around itself. Um, you can see an example of what's going on there, and you can see that it's got a clear radius here, which we can change the range if we would like. And it's actually a very nice light. We might make use of it later on. Uh, spotlight works exactly like you would imagine it works. You can see it, it creates a cone here. And then finally, we have an area light. 
um, which is for softer shadow type area lighting. Again, this is a, a Unity Pro feature, so obviously we won't be using it at all today. Um, I'm actually, you know what? I was going to use a directional light. I'm going to go ahead and use a point light because it might be slightly more appealing. I mean, it's just, I'm going to center it. And yeah, you can see here, if we were to set it to zero, it'd be right on the plane and it wouldn't quite work out. We want to pull it back from the plane towards the camera, which actually means a negative on the Z axis. And we'll set it to, you know, I think that's nice, kind of a nice soft distance. It's directly between the camera and the plane. Um, but it gives us, you know, just, just a little bit of a sense of physicality here. So let's, let's leave that where it is. The next thing we need is we need walls on the left, top, and right. And we're going to use a cube for that. Well, we're going to use three cubes. And again, this cube here, it starts off, it's a single unit cube. Let me center it here. It's a single unit cube. And the zero point is in the exact middle of the cube, which is why it's kind of sticking out back there. And we're going to reach our first time when we have to ponder exactly how big should these objects be? It's a really, really good question. Um, and for this, I'm going to pick, say that my bricks are going to be slightly longer than they are tall. Um, but that their height and sort of thickness are going to be about the same. And I'm just going to make the width of it too. So I'm going to double the X scale and say that that's going to be the size of my bricks. Uh, I don't like the fact that it sticks through the plane, so I could move the brick forward. But I think it's going to be a lot easier if my bricks are all aligned on the zero for the Z axis. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the plane backwards by one unit. Oops, 0.5 units I suppose. So it is a one, by default, this came in as a one by one by one cube. I've made it a two by one by one cube. And so the middle point here, the offset from the middle to one edge is 0.5 meters, which that sort of thing will come up later. So at this point we do have a brick and then we realize, well, our backdrop's not really big enough. Uh, we're gonna wanna fit a lot more bricks on here. I don't know how many, but for right now, I think I'm going to, I've got to at least double the size of it. Um, it's actually gonna be in the Y or the Z coordinate here. Probably we're going to need something much bigger than that, but we'll use that for now. And of course, the view, it now encompasses the entire camera screen. So now you get to the problem where, well, I, can, I guess I can sort of wiggle it back and forth and try to pick the right one. But the thing with perspective cameras, you've got to think they're, they expand out and you sort of get a little bit of a fisheye effect. What we possibly want to do is actually change our camera. Instead of being a perspective camera, switch it to orthographic which means it's going to be, it's basically just a cube projection. You're not going to get the sort of perspective 3D lines. Everything's going to be square and perfectly 2D. We're going to use a 3D engine here to simulate a 2D game by using an orthographic camera. And the size here is literally the size of our viewport, which I guess is going to be 10. Yeah, looks like that's perfect. Our plane right now is basically a 10 by 10 span. And the fact that it's not quite square is sort of screwing it up. The projection is based on the height. Um, but unless we are looking at it with a window that's narrower than it is tall and no monitors like that by default, we are going to get to see our entire play field. And we are going to mostly play in this sort of orthographic view. We're basically making a 2D game despite the fact that we're in a 3D engine. 